Using drugs, and I remember when I first started selling drugs, and my mom found out about that. I mean, she really came down on me hard about that. And my mom was like, "Mister, you out there doing that mess?" She was like, "Boy, let me tell you, don't you ever bring that mess to my doorstep. Don't ever bring it in my house. Don't you ever, ever ask me to buy you anything." If that's what you're going to do, I'm done with you. I'm not buying you nothing. I'm not giving you nothing. And to me, I was like, all right, cool. <laughs> you know, all right, cool. Old how old were you? I'm 51 now. No, I'm saying how old were you then? Uh, I, I was she, like, I was about out. 14. I was about 14 when she found out that I So you've been sick. in the game for three years? I had been, I had been in the I like to say that I was born in it. I was born in it because... I knew my brothers were coming. So how many brothers did you have? I had two brothers. And right? they, and they was a, they was original members of Folk on the Hustlers. So they started they helped start it. They helped start it. Four. Right? They was there. Yeah, I got that number now. Yeah. Four. Folk on the Hustlers. Four corners. Right. That's right. So they were hustling right. all four corners of the neighborhood. It was they claimed everything. They, they, claimed, yeah, they, everything. they claimed everything. Wherever we was at, we claimed all four corners of it. So so right, you, you say from claim. one block to the next block to the next block to the next block. Uh, the so folk what does claim hustling, mean? What does that mean? Right, so like we took over that. We so took what about that. the adults? Did they let y'all take over the neighborhood? The adults were just as much as part of it as oh. the young cats. The young cats were because that's where we got it from the adults. We well, got it from the adults. Dad? My dad wasn't part of it. So my dad was military you? career. My dad wasn't part of it. He was military career. So that means and, he was uh, gone? My dad was in and out because he was on duty. He was doing his tours. He was in and out the so military. He, he didn't come back? Yeah, what? yeah, yeah, yeah. My dad, he, he was around. He okay. came around. He took care of his business as far as with us and with my mom, right? I'm saying so, he didn't come around with no... No, my, my, rifle no, 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 no. The uh, thing was, my, uh, my, my father was, my father was a gentleman. Yeah, gentleman. he was, he was real humble. I've never seen him argue, fight, or hit my mom. I've never seen him praise the voice at my mom or any of that. Wow. So, yeah, my father was like the perfect man. Wow. All right. But... I, my friends, they parents were, they, they, they parents were like my parents too, right? Okay, they were right. gentle people, loving, kind people that worked. Like my mom worked her, her pretty much until she couldn't work no more. Hmm. Um, I remember when I was a young kid and young, I used to child. get up early, young a child. child. I used okay. to get up early in the morning with my mom and I would ride her down, down the elevator with a knife on me. I would put a butcher knife on me. And I would ride her down the elevator stairs, I mean down the elevator to the first floor so she can get in her car and go to work. And it was still dark outside. But I had this knife on me. So I knew if somebody would try to do something to me, they were gonna get that knife in them. Well, right, so yeah, my mom, when my mom, my dad, those were the times when my dad was off in the military, right? Yeah. And so I was the baby boy. My brothers, they was, maybe off in jail somewhere because uh, when I was coming up, my brothers were always in and out of jail, right? Okay. But I can't remember a time where I saw them walk my mom to the car and, mm -hmm. and walk her, you know, make sure she got in her car safe and go off to work, right? I was mm -hmm. that person. So it's like that responsibility was on me and with me, mm -hmm. okay? <clears throat> and uh, I remember when the time when my mom couldn't work no more and my mom had to go on public assistance okay. all right and so that was another reason that was another you know thing that made me say you know what i can't depend on that mm -hmm. all right i can get out here by stealing and robbing the freight trains and doing other selling drugs and all that and make me some money mm -hmm. other than 
you know, waiting on moms to receive a check to split between me and my other siblings, you know, nah. So was the other parents pretty much in the same home um, as far as I, I remember, and sisters? I, I remember when all of our parents were working, okay. right? Yeah, I remember it was a milk factory right under the wall, pretty much across the street from my building. Uh, and they, I remember when they delivered milk to the apartments, yeah. milk and eggs and I butter remember. to the apartments in the projects without fear, uh, right? I remember when all of our parents used to work, but when when they the started bad. losing those jobs, right? Because the, the the military base was right there on the Wallach as well, about a block away, and then up uh, and down Lake Street, they had all the factories, all the businesses, mm -hmm. right? That was making so much stuff. Everybody worked, right? Mm -hmm. And so um, we had the swimming pools and all that in, in the projects. And, and uh, mm -hmm. when those jobs went away and the drugs started playing a big factor into the way our community was going to be shaped, mm -hmm. then we had to, it just it all changed. So you said the drugs weren't there initially when you no. were raised I, up? When I was, as a young man, when I was raised up, coming up, the drugs that's out today wasn't the drugs that was out back then. Drugs that was out back then was called teas and blues, right? Yellow and white pill, right? Okay. And uh, my oldest brother was an addict of those drugs. My oldest sister and my sister next to her was an addict of those pills as well, oh. right? And uh, even from when we was, when I was a young kid, um, yeah, I used to see them, you know, put the drugs inside a cap or whatever spoon and light it up, eat it, melt it down, mm -hmm. right? And then pull it, put a syringe to it and pull it back into the syringe. And I'm talking about, man, tie their arms and, and then tell us, come here, me and my nieces, come here, come here, here, mm -hmm. pluck this for me. Right, and they would make us pluck the needle into their vein in their arms growing up as what? a kid. So we saw all this, right? Wow. Um, my sister Renee, may she rest in peace, she's no longer here with us either. Mm. I, she kind of like took me under her wing and she was one of the ones that was selling it. So she pretty much introduced me to the drug game as a child before I started selling it on my own. You know, she introduced me to that because she, had me with her, and she used to, I remember she used to pay me a quarter. A quarter. She used to pay me a quarter to uh -huh. run up on Western Madison and hand this package off to someone, right? I knew what it was. I knew what, what it was. was. It was Teas and Blues, right? Oh. I knew all, and we used to, at that <laughs> so time, they might not know what right, at that time, we used, used to call them, <laughs> at that time, we used to call them Dauphines. We used to call them dolphins. We kids, we used to call them dolphins. Them dolphins, right? And and I knew each and every last one of them that hung up on the strip because I was hanging with my sister Renee, mm. right? And every time I made that quarter, I would run straight to the game room to play some games. Oh, okay. Right? So there was yeah, so <laughs> it was a fun thing for me. Side. The police didn't mess with me. Okay. You know, I was a kid, and uh, okay. yeah, and and and. and uh, and the other reward was that she would let me park her car, right? So my older sister taught me how to drive. She would let me park her car when we got home, oh, you know, okay. and that was cool. So yeah, it was pretty much a pick for me at that time. Uh huh. Okay. So when now, when I became a teen, and me and my guys had a had 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 became members of the folk on the hustle game, mm -hmm. right? All right, things got really serious. Really serious. Really serious. Because we went from making our own guns, which we called zip guns at the time, uh, all right? We went from making our own gun to actually buying guns and getting a hold to guns from the folk on the hustle from farther west side than where we were. And so what's a zip gun? A zip gun, okay, so a zip gun is a self-made gun, right? A, a zip good. gun is a self-made gun where you take a wood, a a, a steel a steel rod that ha come off of doors, 
right? You know the doors that open up and then they close back on their own? Yeah. Right? At the top, they used to have the round steel rods in them, right? Right. That pushes back in and back out, right? Uh -huh. But at the top of it, it had a screw. Okay. That hold that piece in that go back and forth, that hold that piece in, right? Uh -huh. So we would take those off the project doors and we would tape it around a piece of wood and take the bottom part or nail the bottom part into a, another piece of the wood, right? Uh -huh. And it got like an L shape. Okay. Right? And then we would we would uh insert a bullet size, whatever kind of bullet that could fit in there, inside mm -hmm. of it and screw it down on top of it, right? And then we would um, get a hanger, curl the bottom of the hanger, right? And apply it to the back of the 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 uh, right. zip gun, the rod, right? And then we would use rubber bands, and we would wrap rubber bands around, around, around. So when we pull it back, and you just hold it, and when you let it go, the the, the steel hanger would hit the back of the bullet, and come out. Oh. Right. And so that's what we started off using as uh, a deterrent to the other gangs who we were fighting against. So y'all got guns. Time. So our and guns were handmade. They had zip guns as well because oh, okay. the, it, the material was plenty. We had a wood factory across the street and we had all the rocks in every door, hallway door, well, in projects. <laughs> they go right? around yeah, taking so, the doors off the engine mm -hmm. so they can make them So that we can make Make, wow. a, make a homemade gun with. So what did the uh, uh, building managers say about all that? They had no control of the situations. They just, right? they just wanted the rent. You know, so management they, they only wanted the, the rent. They, just leave the doors they, they never fixed them, those. They, they, so, they, yeah, they just stayed up there. They never fixed them. All right? And uh, wow. so me and, my, me and my friends, we started, we started indulging in the drugs that we were doing. We started indulging in drugs that we was selling and uh yeah and 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 even um pretty much we got we all became addicts ourselves. We oh, all wow. became addicted to the drugs. And this still is mm -hmm. and this was at, at no at at that time me and my friends we never dealt with teas and blues. Okay. Teas and blues have started to phase out. Right. And 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 in our era, of with me coming up, there was this this drug called this liquid called syrup, and they called it porn at the time, right? Porn syrup. But we didn't do the syrup because my sister, her era, along with my wife, with their era, my wife and my sister's best friend. So we saw them doing that, hmm. right? And our thing was smoking weed, maybe uh, snort a little coke, right? And then when the heroin gang came out, right, it was plentiful. It was real back then. There wasn't no fitting on being put on it or any of that mess, right? And and so when we got a hold to that, it was in abundance for us, hmm. right? It was given to us, right, okay. so that we can sell, make money, buy guns, right? Uh -huh. Trick off, be women, all this old crazy mess coming up. Hmm. And... uh how old were you at this time? At that time, I became like 16, 17. Okay. Right. And so let me ask you this. What, were you in school? I was in school. Were I was, you in I was any in activities school. in school? I was, I was in school. I played, played football? I played football for uh, Richard T. Crane back back then. I, but I was in school selling drugs. I was in school selling drugs. I was in school with a gun team? on the football team. So what did the coach say? Yeah, they didn't know. No, they didn't. They didn't know. If the they coach didn't know. know what he done? Uh, we had a hallway. We had a hallway that was by the auto shop in high school. Well, this where every, all of us would go down there and get hot, drink beer, smoke weed, drink wine. And right. the football coach didn't know about this. No, they didn't. They didn't know about any of that. Like, they if they knew, they didn't. They didn't care. Pretty much at care. that time, right? Okay. So I can't say they didn't care because they really showed us that they did, mm -hmm. right? But we was young, we didn't want to listen, right? It was just something to get in, get involved with at that time. Mm -hmm. And I went to school up until 11th grade, right? Oh. I went to school all the way up until 11th grade in high school. I mean, I would do all the dirt throughout the week, over the weekend or whatever, and then go 
right back to school. Go, go to school <laughs> like it never happened. Really? Right? And then when the police started coming up to the schools looking for us, hmm. and, and we was game banging and fighting, and the school got rougher, and I was like, Joe, it's time to go. We got to get up out of here. All right? So. Yeah. And so, by any means. the name of the school y'all was at? Richard T. Crane. Richard T. Yeah, Crane. on West Side Chicago. And on those of you that went to Richard T. Crane mm -hmm. on South Side Chicago. No, no, on the West Side of Chicago. West Side of Chicago. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> you talking about some of y'all. Yeah, they know me. Y'all <laughs> know what's up. Y'all know me. Okay, so <laughs> so now we 16, 17, mm -hmm. and now we got to get out. Yeah, now we got to get out. So me and my friends, we stopped going. Stop going to we school. We stopped going to school. Yeah, we stopped going to school and made um, made made just made it our time to sell drugs, rob people, rob buses, rob the freight train, rob the L's, right? The people's on the L's, the people's on the buses, the freight trains that roll through our community, right? By any means necessary, we made it our business to do that in order to make some money. So right. now, yes. wait a minute now, hold on. Yes, we did that to make money. So if you had good parents. Yes. Yes, a lot of us can't have good parents. Raised you up in church. Mm hmm What was the church doing about all this? <laughs> you don't mind my but back, back, uh Back then, all right, I don't think too many parents, too many people put the church in their business at home. I'm right? saying what was at the home, church doing? The, what right, was the, the, right, the church the, right, right, right. What's no, happening no, in the no, 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 no. They no, did no. Even the churches that was in the community didn't get involved in what was going on in the community. Oh, see what All I'm right. saying? See, even the churches that was in the community didn't get involved in the what was going on in the community out of fear. Out, out of fear? Yes, well, out of fear. I thought the Bible said that God's oh not giving us a spirit of fear, um, but power, love, and sound. Ain't that in there? Where's that found at, Latrice? Uh, <laughs> God, is that uh, Timothy? First Timothy chapter mm -hmm. 1, verse... Yeah. Well, see, our communities set, my community set next to the Henry Horner home community, right? The and who, who the Henry Horner homes, the Henry, projects. Henry, Henry Horner. Horner's, yeah, in Chicago. Okay. So, it is you got these two different projects, housing authorities, right? But we all know each other. Okay. We all, yeah. And we consider it all just one big community, okay. right? Because we all went to the same schools or next to each other. And you have churches that have been implanted right into those communities, mm -hmm. you see? But those churches didn't get involved back in those days, the 70s, 80s, right? Especially in the 90s, they didn't get involved in what was going on in the community because they didn't want that drama come to their doorstep. But right? it's in their neighborhood, so it's at their doorstep. What, uh, what they, they didn't want that drama come to their doorstep, right? And so... Um, I don't know the logic behind it at okay. that time. Right? I don't know the logic behind it at that time. However, uh, my my church, w which wasn't in my community, okay, right? It was far away from my community. Oh, right? okay. But my church were involved in a lot of community projects and feeding the homeless and things like that. I remember my mom. I can be outside doing something that I had no business doing, and my mom would say, "Hey, baby, come here," you know, and I would go over to see her. She's like, "Hey, we finna go and feed the homeless with the church. You wanna go with us?" And I was like, "Yeah, I'll go." All right, and so I would go with my mom and our church members, my aunties. We would go to downtown Chicago, Lord Wacker uh -huh. Drive, and we would feed the homeless. Be gone. Yeah, I would go with them because they would make all these meals at the church and then pack them up and then we would go feed the homeless. And, and we would get back and my friends would be like, man, what's up, church boy? Where you been? Uh, <laughs> you know, things <laughs> like that. Like, man, somewhere y'all should have been. So, yeah. Uh, now, what age was this about? Uh, this was like, you know, like like 14, 15. Okay. Yeah, 14, 15. Um, so you still in the game. Mm-hmm. But when it came to doing some work for the church, yeah. you was game for that. Game for that, right? Okay. Okay. So, so, I um, 
I started getting in trouble with the law. All right. I got older, I started getting in trouble with the law, right? And, and the rate that I was going, my mom was like, man, she said, I'll tell you what, I promise you this. She said, boy, you're going to turn 21 in the grave or in jail. She said, believe me. She spoke that over. Mock my word. She said, you're going to turn 21 or in the grave or in jail. Okay. Yeah. I went, to, I went to prison that? at the age of 20. So I went to prison 20. at the age of 20, and I turned 21 in prison. And when I called home for my birthday in prison, my mother, the first thing came out of my mouth, she said, didn't I tell you? Now, now, let me, let me, let mm -hmm. me interject here on that yeah. one. Because the parents, the, the Bible says, first come warning, then come destruction. Mm -hmm. So what she was saying on one end was, I'm letting you know what's going to happen if you stay on this road. If you stay on this road. Okay. That's right. Now, the Bible says there's a wide road that lead it to destruction. Mm -hmm. So, she was warning him. Oh, yeah. Now, the other side of that coin is, parents, you don't want to speak that over your children. No. You want to say, the Lord has a route for you to take. Mm -hmm. And if you take his route, you're going to be blessed. But if you don't take his route, mm -hmm. you're going to suffer the consequences of his judgment on your life of sin. Now, consequences is different from you speaking things into existence. Okay, you got to be careful. You want to give warning, but you don't want to speak things into existence. The Bible says, in Proverbs it says, death and life is in the power of the tongue. So you can speak death or you can speak life. Now, how we have to do this is you got to let them know that sin brings about punishment. The Bible says the wages of sin, Romans uh, 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 6 and 23, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. So he's telling you if you go right, you get the gift. If you go wrong, you get the wages of sin, which is death, mm -hmm. okay? So you want to be careful in your warning with your words, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things that if you notice, and we say this on the show, you don't want to keep calling your children kids mm. because kids is the baby goat. And the baby goat, by nature, is rebellious. So society continues to refer to the children as baby goats. Mm -hmm. And the baby goat spirit is rebellious. All right. And that's what we have in society today. A majority of our children are being rebellious because that's been spoken over their lives mm -hmm. every time you say kids. Mm -hmm. So let's shift that back to what the Word of God says. He called them children. Children are in heritage of the Lord. Okay? Psalms 127. Children are heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is his reward. Jesus told Peter, he said, feed my sheep and feed my lambs. So if you want to call them something, call them lambs. Okay? Those are baby sheep. The lamb spirit is humble and submissive. The goat spirit is... The baby goes the kid is rebellious and stubborn. Mm -hmm. So you got to be careful what you speak over your children. Mm -hmm. All right. So you need to interject that in into the testimony here. All right. So uh, so now you went to mm -hmm. do some things with the church, but the church has not gotten involved with dealing with these gangs. No, not at all. Not at all. Not at all. Unless the gangs came to them asking for help. Right, asking for a way out or in that type of situation. Okay. And the church won't have nothing to do with them. Church had nothing to do nothing with Nothing to do with them at all, period. So um, my process of me going to prison, right, being incarcerated, the first time it was like, okay, uh, I, ain't, I ain't gonna do that no more. You know, okay. I felt the homesickness and so forth and all that other mess right but while i was there my family was there for me but the gang was also there for me right so the how gang was there for me because they 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 made sure i was okay they took care of me while i was there they gave me things and plus my family was known when my brothers was known 
you know, right? Yeah. And so they was all like, that's little such and such and such, that's such and such and such. And so that kind of like got me a ways inside the prison, right? Oh, okay. However, I, my, 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 I fell back off into the same thing. I fell back off into using the drugs. Mm-hmm. I fell back off into the <laughs> game banking and carrying on the carrying the guns and all this other mess, right? And I repeated that process again. So now this right. is, you didn't get out of jail. Yes, and fell how, back how long, in. How long were you in jail the first time? The first time I was in jail for 18 months. 18 months. I did 18 months off a three year bit. I went to jail. At that time, the inmates in the Illinois Department of Correction ran the prisons, right? The no questions. No questions asked. We, the inmates yes, the inmates ran the, ran the prisons, right? The only thing you couldn't do was go home when you wanted to. But what? to go, everything that was outside was inside, right? Everything yo. that was outside was inside, right? From, so from, from, in from, from sex with your visitor, openly in front of. Every, you joking. You was able to have sex with your visitors, all that mess openly, and, and the officers there didn't say anything. We had cash money, the drugs, all of that was in the prison that was outside. Right? Y'all hear that? The only thing you had to do was wait on your out date to come to get out, pretty much. This, was, was, pr- this was during the 80s and 90s era inside the Illinois Department of Correction. And so going back to prison, all right, it was like, eh, you know, eventually I'm get caught out here doing this and doing that, doing this and doing that. But when I get, if I go to prison, right, I'm gonna be all right because the gang gonna take care of me, all right, and then possibly my family still gonna be there for me, all okay. right. And so I repeated that process five more times. I repeated that process five more times going to prison, all right. Wow. And this, Did they uh, repeat the five times of supporting you, gang and family? No, no. <coughs> As time went on, the gangs fell apart. The gangs fell apart. Everybody became addicted. All of, I'll say about at least 90, 90% of my friends end up dying. 90% of my friends wow. end up getting killed. A lot of, all the guys that I personally grew up with and knew, Right, I had this brotherhood with, right? All of them are now dead. Wow. Yeah, they're now dead. So it's only me by the handful I can count on my fingers, on five fingers, that's still here mm-hmm. from that era. Going out of, up, out um, of about how many? Out of, out of at least about 50 of us. Wow. Yeah, about 50 of us. Everybody's in the, is, is now it's in their grave. That's yeah, everybody is at least is in their grave now. It's a lot of more people out there who I grew up with, right? That I've known my entire life, right? Mm-hmm. We've been there. I grew up with, but you wasn't my friend like that. Okay. You wasn't my brother, I right? Yeah. Like I had those who were really close to me, right? And so they all had tragic deaths, wow. right? They've been killed. Um, they've died of drug overdoses been killed in car accidents and things like that, all right? Uh, accidentally been killed, uh, stuff like that, right? Now, and and now, even to the point of committing suicide. And someone committed suicide? Yeah, and so. Now, did, you, did, you, did were they parents, uh, were they raised up in church and have praying parents? Um, no, not all of them, not all of them, because a lot of their parents became addicts. A lot of their parents started buying drugs from us. A lot of parents oh, started doing drugs oh. and buying drugs from us because they were they they were jobless. They didn't have jobs. They depend on public aid, oh, and then they started God. allowing their kids to bring drugs and alcohol in the homes, and 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 they they be they started to they started to become friends with their kids the instead of being children. with their children. children. Exactly. Remember that word, now. right? And exactly. Okay, so we got fifteen minutes. So. Yeah, they started okay. to become friends with them. So, on the, the, the last time that I had went to prison, I said, I can't do this no more. Something has to change. Something has okay, to change. I'm like, I'm 51. No, I'm talking right. about when you said that. Oh, at that time, I was, I was uh, 49. 
I was 49. I, at that time, I was 49. You right? were 49. I realized at the age of 33. Oh, no, no, 39, 39. I'm sorry, y'all. 39, 39. At the age of 33, at the age of 33, I like to say I became a man at the age of 33. Because oh, I. Like Jesus. Hey, I became a man <laughs> at the age of 33. Okay. Right? Jesus is the truth, right? <laughs> and uh, I realized what my passion was. Okay. I realized that I had a gift. And I knew what it was that I wanted to do with that gift, right? Okay. And that gift was cooking. Cooking. I was creative. All right. With, with cooking, okay. right? I made things happen with food that coming up in my household they didn't do. 